G'day all, welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and our video user guides for APT where this time we're going to be looking at dithering and guiding settings I did touch on this briefly in a previous video when I did the gear tab but this time I'm going to have more details for the settings to use um, just remember that even if you're not using guiding or dithering you will need to go in here the first time you start APT uh, just to get the settings right so they don't interfere or don't get pop-ups uh, about having various features not enabled so I'm going to cover mostly uh, just single camera setup in this but I will touch just lightly on the multi camera setup uh, details in here uh, but the whole multi-camera and synchronization everything else will be covered fully in another video because that's a whole subject on its own so let's uh, not waste any time and get into it this is going to take a little while anyway so let's go okay so here we are in APT and you'll find two ways to access your guiding settings and that's either through your gear tab in the guiding section there for settings or you can use the shortcut F7 which will also open them now the first thing you'll need to decide is are you going to be using guiding um, even if you're not the first time you start APT you'll have to come in here and disable everything that you need to and the first thing you do is turn off auto start PhD 2 um, down the bottom here control guiding turn that off and up the top here select APT dithering by doing that you disable everything to do with guiding so you don't have to worry about it because uh, if you don't you'll get pop up saying you haven't got PhD2 running blah 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 when you start a plan it gets rid of all that but as I'm going to be using guiding I'll turn my back on my control guiding and up the top here you need to, need to decide on the program you're going to be using now I use PhD2 um, so from this list I can't really help you with most of these uh, PhD 1 if you're using that I do suggest updating um, PhD 2 will do everything but just a bit better you can still use ST4 guiding which is what uh, AP, uh, PhD 2 1 was good for but um, PhD 2 is a much better option uh, meta guide I've had a quick look at that uh, looks an interesting one I might test it out in another day but uh, it looks a bit more complicated to get going at first but I don't know really yet um, APD dithering and APT pulse dithering these are if you're not using guiding at all um, you can use APT to do its own dithering so it will use your image camera for the dithering rather than using a guide camera because uh, generally guiding is uh, dithering is handled by the guiding program but if you're not guiding you can use APT to dither and I do recommend dithering uh, it helps a lot with noise reduction and gets rid of things like walking noise across your images APT pulse dithering's a bit different um, it's generally used with things that are self guiding um, and if you have uh, apparently uh, Skywatcher Star Adventurer and similar mounts uh, apparently that works with that and what it does it sends a pulse and you define the pulse length rather than sending a dithering distance um, I'll explain that more in a bit in a couple of seconds uh, Lacerta MGen I have no idea at all about this I have never used it I've never really looked into it at all so if you need help with that uh, the forums were the place to go <laughs> not my videos Linguider is if you is a Linux version of a guider and apparently it works on Raspberry Pi um, if you're running that you probably know more about it than I would so again if you need help uh, forums are a place to find it and of course Astro Arts another option as well so I'm going to select PhD2 guiding and that'll be my program I use um, auto dithering I do use it and I do like I said recommend using dithering because it helps with noise reduction when you stack your images so it's up to you whether you use it or not um, I'm going to leave it on now your dithering distance if you're using APT pulse guiding uh, this isn't actually a distance this uh, sets the size of your pulse it sends so if you set it at a one it's multiplied by a hundred for the pulse length so here I've got six set here so the pulse it sends to the mount to do the dither will be six hundred uh, 
milliseconds so that's what that does there um, I'll be going more into this because people get very confused about just setting the dithering distance and what they need to set so I've got a bit more on that later on in this video so I'll cover it there again your M Gen mode um, I can't help you with that <laughs> it's up to you um, so much much I can do there now your dithering stability this is uh, how close the guiding needs to get back to the guide star to be considered finished for the dithering um, so I've got it at one pixel you can go less you can go more uh, it depends on how good your mount is and how good your guiding is um, I find one works for me I think the default about 0.7 um, actually I could probably go lower than this now I used to have problems uh, way back when I had a uh, an old EQM 35 so maybe I can go down further than that uh, your dithering settle time um, after dithering finishes this is just how much time your mount needs to settle and you know get tracking again properly it's just the time to allow for your tracking to get back on back and going um, depends on how good your mount is how good you need 15 seconds I think is the default uh, my mount gets back tracking pretty well so I leave it at 10 but if you finish your guiding uh, finish your dither and you start your guiding again and you're getting big spikes right after doing the dither uh, you might want to extend this time then you've got your dithering timeout um, defaults 180 seconds that's a long time to wait for a dither to finish uh, I've actually been through my logs and come up with the figures uh, I had 15 seconds of my settle time back then and I was finding my dithering was completing back then about uh, 21 seconds I think was the average anywhere between about 16 17 seconds and 27 28 seconds so I thought a 30 second timeout was more than enough if it hasn't done it in that time it's not going to do it now the number of images to dim it dither, that's up to you if you're using shorter exposures you, know, you might be taking 10 or 15 second exposures you might want to dither, dither on every third or fourth image uh, longer exposures I did on every single image so but that's up to you it depends on the length of your images uh, if you're only taking 10 second exposures you don't really want to be dithering every single one because the dither is going to take longer than the image does so you might want to set that up you know, every four or five whatever images but uh, depends how many images you're taking as well the more images you're taking the longer you can have between the dithers pardon me uh, the dithering start delay generally you leave this at zero you don't want it to delay the start there's nearly no reason to change that the next little section we have here this is auto cancel your exposures um, in here if you turn this on I haven't tested this myself yet I've got to do it uh, because it sounds like it's going to save a bit because what it does is uh, if you turn this on and you set your distance in here if the guide star moves that far away f in pixels from uh, the center of your guiding uh, what happens is APT will cancel the current image uh, to, to avoid star trails and then start a new image the image isn't erased from your plan it's not counted as being completed in your plan it just stops it and starts it again basically so that's a setting that could come in handy I've got to check this right out and test it myself to find out what's a good distance and everything um, but uh, something I need to test later on I'll do that and of course you want control guiding and you need that turned on so APT can control the guiding uh, you know like stopping guiding when it's dithering and things like that uh, stopping the guiding when you're slewing somewhere else and things like that so uh, and for meridian flips you have to have that on for meridian flips so that helps there okay so when you do an, an after go to delay what this is is when you go finish your go to um, this is to do with guiding not for uh, dithering this is guiding um, it's a delay after you get to um, your new location from a go to it's just how long to wait for the guide camera to get a good image 
before it uh, starts telling it to find a guide star. So if you've ever watched your mount after it's moved through your guiding program, through PhD or whatever, you'll notice when it first gets to its position that you might have stars with trails on it. It's just to give it a bit of a time to settle down and get a good image. Generally want it three, four, five times your exposure length in your guiding program. Um, so five works for me, so I'm happy with that. And then the last one is uh, down the bottom here is um, it's a delay on resume guiding. So the first delay waits and then tells the guiding program to uh, select the guiding star. And this is a delay after that to wait until it's picked a guiding star and ready to go. So that can be what you need, um, you know, just to give the uh, guiding program time to get a guide star and restart guiding again. Now then you have your auto start AP, uh, PhD2. This is not a bad one um, to have. It saves you setting up PhD2 before you know before you launch APT or whatever. I have it turned off at the moment simply because I'm often running it in simulation mode, and uh, I need to make sure I go in and turn off simulation mode in AP, in PhD2 and set it back to my real gear. Um, you shouldn't need to change the IP and ports for uh, PhD2 at least. Um, so this is your just your port and your um, so your local host 127.0.0.1. That just means the same computer, and the port you won't need to change that unless you're running multiple mounts, uh, multiple setups with multiple guiding cameras. PhD2 can do that, uh, and they just operate on a different port. But for general use, you won't need to worry about that. Now, this next two settings are for your graph you've got here. Um, default, when you first start, is pixels. Uh, what you really want is um, arc seconds, uh, simply because pixels, the camera is going to be moving a tiny bit each time. Most times it won't get to one pixel. You'll get a nice flat graph, but it won't tell you anything. Arc seconds is a better way to do it. Uh, the scale, that's up to you. Um, generally for my guiding, I'm in between, most of my pulses are going to be in between um, minus two and plus two, so I set mine at four. Um, if they're getting outside that, then I'm having real problems, but uh, generally, I'm going to leave it on four. And that's it for your normal settings at the moment. Uh, then we go down the bottom here is your multi-camera dithering. And this is if you're using multiple cameras uh, all at once. You can set them up. You need to have separate profiles. Um, you need to have separate shortcuts to start them and everything else. As I said, I'll be going into this in another video, um, simply because there's so much involved in it. But uh, generally for just a quick one on it is you either set one of them up as the server and the client, um, depending on what you need. Free mode means is they're just free to go how they like. Uh, server mode is the one that can, controls the guiding, and client mode is the one who receives the uh, pulses for the di for the guiding. Uh, sorry, the information for the from the server to the client, and then you've got your two different modes you can run in here. Uh, strict mode means that each camera takes one image if you're running two cameras, so they'll take one image the camera that finishes first which is which should be your client always should be your client uh, will take one image and it will wait until a dither is done then it'll take another image now that's strict mode loose mode is a better way if you're taking shorter images on one camera than the other so you put your server for the long images you might take say five minute images on on that camera and uh, you might have your DSLR piggybacked on the back of your scope and uh, you might be taking 30 second exposures on that. And what this does is it lets your main guide camera keep going and your client camera will keep taking images until it gets to the point where an image would run over the uh, time left for your main camera. So you might get 10 or 15 images before the uh, dither needs to happen and that's probably a better way to operate unless the uh, image exposure time on each camera is about the same. 
and uh, so that's what you can do there if you're only running one camera it doesn't matter what this setting is uh, just leave it on free mode uh, cling, uh, client ping timeout and that's just if you have a client and server working together it's just how long it they if they time out uh, which can cause problems I don't know I've only had it happen once and really annoying uh, so you might want to extend that if you want but that depends on how well you're connected between them and that's it for the general overview of them all I'm gonna pause this here and come back in a minute and I'm going to discuss uh, dithering distances so I'll be right back in a minute and we'll get into that okay so now we're going to discuss the uh, dithering distances what it means and how to determine what you need to put in here um, with everything except for the APT pulse dithering which like I said deter this more determines the pulse length for the signal it sends to the mounts um, this sets the number of guide camera pixels for the dithering on your guiding program to use. Um, it is the maximum dithering distance, not the actual dithering distance that will be used. So when you set this, that's as far as it'll go. But uh, as dithering needs to be random, you'll get a random figure between the minimum and whatever your maximum number of pixels is here. And just remember that's guide camera pixels. Um, pardon me now if you're using APT uh, dithering it's a quite a simple one for the fact that uh, in here is the number of imaging camera pixels you will move so if you had this set at six it would only move six pixels generally you want to be at least 10 pixels uh, so if you're using you're not guiding and you're using APT dithering I'd set this at least 10 or 15 pixels and that is your imaging camera pixels but for everything else it's guide camera pixels you need to move and what you need to do is calculate uh, the settings you need to get that to work and uh, there are a number of ways to do this now you need to determine um, the ratio between your uh, the resolution of your imaging camera and the resolution of your guide camera now this is all set up this is astronomy tools I'll post a link to it in the uh, forum for this calculator and it tells you what your uh, resolution is for each one so as you can see my imaging is 1.84 arc seconds per pixel and my guide camera is 4.77 arc seconds per pixel and down the bottom here it tells you the ratio so one uh, guide camera pixel will move my imaging camera about 2.6 arcs uh, 2.6 times that so 2.6 pixels so that's what you need to work out and it's that figure down the bottom down here that determines um, how many pixels you need to move on your guide camera to get your imaging camera to move a particular uh, number of pixels at, at maximum and that's one way to work it out um, there is another online calculator over here this is uh, astronomy astro how to and this is a simpler way to do it um, you enter the pixel size of your cameras uh, for both your guide and imaging and the focal lengths how many pixels from your uh, how many pixels on your imaging camera you want to dither um, as I said at least 10 uh, maybe 15 and it gives you the value you need to enter this value down here is what you enter into APT for the dithering distance so moving setting six there will move the guide camera six pixels but that's going to be equal to well just over 15 pixels for my imaging camera and that's what you want um, for an alternative uh, where are we down here this is one I set up a spreadsheet I set up the other day um, I'll post a link to it it's I posted it on the APT forums I'll post a link to the post with it with it in and you can download it and use it if you wish or not download it and use it it's up to you but it basically does the same thing as what you just saw on the Astro how to uh, you enter your f focal lengths for your um, equipment remembering to take into account any reducers or barlows you might be using um, so mine is 518 after it gets reduced 0.9 uh, 
my guide camera is 162 if I was using a Barlow on the guide camera I'd have to double that or whatever uh, the normal pixel size for your camera and any binning you're using and how many pixels you want to move uh, on your imaging camera and that's the important one the pixels on your imaging cameras are different to the pixels on your guiding camera even if you had exactly the same pixel size here the focal length ratio changes what you get so you'd still need to have a different one um, and again I'll just show you the uh, the ratio down here 2.595 is how far each guide camera pixel will move my imaging camera and again down the bottom you get the figure to use in APT but I'll link to that if you want to download that and have that on your computer to work it out it's just another way to do it it's exactly the same as the one from the Astro tools and same way that one works so you get your figure there and that's what you enter in your dithering distance um, as I said that's your maximum dithering distance and because the dithering distances are random to get your noise moved around a bit um, it'll go anywhere between the minimum and your maximum you set here so that six will get mine to a maximum of 15 pixels for my camera um, if you're using a DSLR you may want to set that a little bit bigger maybe 20 pixels it depends on what you want and what you're happy with um, just to get rid of all the noise um, but I think that's about it for dithering and guiding at the moment um, hopefully this has helped people if you have any problems again uh, you can either ask in the uh, comments below or maybe even better go to the forums and, and sign up there and, and get in there and ask your questions there there's a lot of people there a lot smarter than me that will give you some help but I'm going to finish this up right now uh, which is all clear skies and I will see you in another video shortly uh, the next one will probably be the molded camera one and that's going to be a bit longer than this one probably and this is long enough take care all bye